What's up, everyone? There is yet another 5 horsepower Briggs & Stratton engine that is part of a Montgomery Ward's rototiller. Except unlike the others, this one has a completely different problem. So it seems like every single one of them just had two or three unique problems. Weird. Anyway, so unlike the others, the tank, I uh, can't really see, it's almost spotless. It has a little bit of old gas in there, but it's literally nothing. Um, I don't know if it has spark or anything, we'll figure that out. It doesn't have the correct cover of air filter, but that's not too much of a problem. It has good compression, doesn't seem like it's bad. The pull cable looks in pretty good shape, it's not sticking or anything. So I don't think the clutch is going to be a problem, it might have a problem with spark. We aren't missing a screw there, so I'll have to find another one off of a different carb. That's okay, but the main problem for this one is that belt are bad. So I'm going to work on this carb, get the engine running, and then we'll do some belts. Before I go through the hassle of putting everything together, I want to spray a little starting fluid or carb cleaner or something down the throat and see if it will burp for us. That will tell us if we have both compression and spark. I don't suspect compression is a problem. The belt is on too tight. Let's try that. Okay, there we go. Taking a plug out has shown me there is no spark. When I pull on it, there's nothing that's going to happen. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear into it, bring it back. There's only, and it's the wrong one, by the way, uh, one bolt here. Actually, I think I found our missing carb screw. Oh boy, we have one that's been worked on before. That's good. So, anyway, screw here, two bolts down there. Uh, that should take off the whole thing. Um, and then from there, it's just a little screen, a quarter and screws that will take off the screen. And from there, we'll take off uh, the clutch. I'm mean, going to clean the clutch later because it's a little finicky. Um, and then or I might just put a new one on and then take the flywheel off. Once I'm done with taking the flywheel off, I'll bring you back and I'll show you the points. Hopefully this time there's actually points that are worth doing something to on this one. The previous one I just had to convert this to a newer style ignition, which don't get me wrong, is probably still the better idea. I just don't have another one and if the points work, well, we're going to use them. But if you were going to do that, you basically just cut this cable, leave this in place, take 
the coil off. And then um, just replace it with one that fits. Make sure to put the little guard here too. That's important. Take the flywheel key out so it doesn't fly away. Okay, good. It's actually not a giant pile of light corrosion. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Let's see if you can see this. So, this is our problem. Oops. See how that's white? You don't want that. You want that to be metal, bare metal. So I'm going to take a small file. Uh, you can use really fine grit sandpaper, fold it over so you use uh, both ends. And, um, you know, you want to do both sides. And then just make sure you see plain metal, and then we're going to uh, try this again. Well, we have it off. Let's take a look at the condition of this. Now, I just pried over this side a little bit with the screwdriver. Now this side should just come right out, yeah. So what we want to see is clean and dry. And that's never, none of that, actually. Hmm. I think the person that had this before put grease in here. At the very least, there's water. Some type of oil, maybe. I don't know. You don't want that. You want this to be very, very dry and very, very clean. Because what ends up happening is when this is, you're pulling on it, these little checks get caught and, and then moves the whole engine over. And when the engine starts, the balls, due to centrifugal force, expand, uh, fly out into their respective little areas, and then they, um, you know, stay there until you turn it off. Until next time, you, you know, you twist it again, and it's there. So, if there's grease in here, they can get stuck, and then you're just pulling, 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 and the the center is just rotating freely on the shaft. You don't want that, obviously. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blow this out, take a Dremel. And you know those little wire brussels, bristle things, I don't know, whatever they're called. I'm going to go in there, clean all this out, take some carb cleaner, spray it, dry it out again, and then um, hit it with some compressed air just to make sure. And then we will do the same with these, except these I'm just going to spray with some carb cleaner and then take like a, maybe this one, maybe some... Uh, sandpaper and to try to clean up the rust but we'll um same thing with this piece we want all that to be clean so i'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll, we'll bring it back much better and then right there i can't really get but those are just not important but in here it's very clean very dry same thing i took some carb cleaner in a shut a towel down there and twist it. And I cleaned the shaft as well. That's important. So now these just go in there. And make sure to clean the top. This part was rusty, this part wasn't. So now I'm just gonna give it a good push. I'll probably put it in my vise real quick just to kind of seal it up, put it back on, and then um, when you do put it on, you could put the smallest amount of like ATF on the shaft of the engine, just to add a little fluidity, make it a little easier, um, but like legitimately only a drop. It will work its way around, Don't get so don't worry about that. And then that should be it. You want to make sure this stays dry and clean. So I'm going to install it, put it back on, and we'll test out the points. Considering that um, I took everything off and the bolt was wrong, which by the way I put a correct uh, bolt in there, 
I put the missing bolt back into the side of the carburetor. I'm sure I'll probably have to clean it. I'm going to see if I can just put a little gas in there and blow it out real quick. And It does have a little bit of fluid in there. I think it's gas. It smells like gas, but I want to blow it out and make sure it's okay. Um, but in the meantime, if I could find my starting fluid. There we are. In the meantime, I want to give it a pull and see if it will start to make sure that the the points work and make sure it has compression and you know, all the, the normal things we want to check for. No choke. That's off. Yeah, it's good now. We have spark and apparently a probably decent motor. I had gone on the internet and trying to find the actual belt size isn't the easiest thing to do for whatever reason. But I was able to find these. So these are from Napa. I was able to go to my local store and tell them the size and this is what they came up with. And I found a form somewhere that also said the same thing, so I'm pretty confident these are good. So go online, get the uh, size, and take it to your local hard or your automotive store. Or if you do have a Napa, you're looking for a 4L350 and a 3L370. The main difference is this is a thinner, this is thicker. I think the thicker ones actually shorter yeah it's shorter too I think the this is the drive belt and this is the reverse I, I could be wrong but I don't think so first things first we need to take off this that should remove this whole cover there's another one the other side that's gonna be a little rough because I'm sure they're rusted in place so let me take them off and then we'll get started covers off so we're going to need to do a couple of things one we're going to need to take off this spring it just latches right there not that big of a problem just get a big pair of pliers and be careful you don't like hurt yourself second right here we need to take this nut off there's a very interesting collection of washers and spacers and everything in there I like to take them off in order and put them in order uh, on the counter, on the table, on the dip, you know, or here, wherever. That's going to allow us to take off this arm. This arm off it relieves all the tension on the belt. And then that bar right here, that's going to be the only real hindrance that we have from then forward. So, what we have to do is that nut right there is the bar. Now, that is almost certainly rusted on there. Very good. So, I'm going to spray down with some penetrating oil while I take off this, and then we will get to installing the belts. I, I don't know who exactly installed that other belt, but I'm not sure what's going on with that. Got the spring off. Let's do the uh, bracket and the finger. Now I know this is in the back. Oh, 
I just want to have that there to hold everything in place. Okay, need to remove this anyway. I'm not going to lie, that usually doesn't come out nearly as easy. So now, this has the same finger. Kind of. It doesn't really go into anything. I need to take off that bottom bracket. It's putting too much pressure on it. Got all that done. Um, actually, I was going to take the pulley off. It's rusted on. And then I was going to... Uh, well, I took one side of the little bracket off over here. But it just not wanting to play well with others. But it comes off. It's actually not as worn as I thought it would. This one is. This person must have been just rototilling in reverse 24-7. Now we go to the installation. I like to install from the bottom. We'll throw the other ones in the trash. Which, okay. Let's have a little moment, you and I. Beginning of this year, my garbage company on recycling days would allow me to put in up to five quarts of used motor oil on the side of the road as long as it was in the original packaging and there was no gasoline. Well, the last couple months, well, we continue on with something else. So, two things happened beginning of the year. One, the prices went up. And two, our last couple months I've been noticing that they just haven't been taking it. So, I call and I ask, I'm like, what's going on? Do you not do this? Did I break some rule? I, I'm confused here. Oh no, starting this year, we know our trucks no longer will do that. You have to take it to the facility. Okay. Facility's actually closer to me than a like an auto zone or a home, or not home, but automotive store. So, okay, that's fine. I'll take it over there. What do I see when I get there? Closed. That's the only part that was closed. The 
recycling part was open. Everything was open. But nope, not the one I needed. It's just irritating. Anyway, so I'm going to put on the reverse belt. That's just how you do the main. You can tighten up the um, lock screw on the pulley, even though it's pretty much stuck on there. And then, um, yeah, I'll just put the nuts back on in order, the spacers back on in order. This holds the little bracket in place on the bottom. I think I do need to put this on first before the other belt, though. Let's make sure of that. Okay, I'm just going to put everything back on. So I got everything in place. Um, things seems to be pretty, pretty good. I did notice that, well, I still have to put down that clamp or the finger, however it is, on the bottom. But this is all the way down here. It was causing the reverse belt not never to get tight. So how I do this? So that's in neutral. That's in um, you know front tail drive. This goes all the way, and there's no slack in here at all. It's nice and secure. Then we pull it up. Let's see if I can do this. That's neutral. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna have to get a better angle, but that was only about halfway until reverse. But as you can tell, it would get tight in there. So I'm uh, gonna leave it the way it is. They seem to be nice and tensioned. Um, I think I'm gonna try to put the covers back on, put some gas in here, and see if it will run. Okay, everything together. Um, should be good to go. Put gas in it. I don't have the, well, maybe I should. The air filter isn't horrible, but it's also not perfect either. Oh, by the way, that's how you are supposed to put in there. The curve goes so it makes it easier to put oil or not oil, gas in the tank. Um, because it is fresh, uh, well, may or may not have fuel in the top of the tank. I don't know if it's going to take how many pulls, maybe five, six. It might not even start at all. I might be just getting a workout for no reason. I don't know. But if I don't have to clean the carb, because it looks like someone already did, I did take a brief look at the diaphragm and it seemed pretty good. I mean, give it a couple of pulls. Give a shot of some car cleaner. It 
It's on full throttle. Now, we have a carb queen again. I'm not going to show this one because I've done two of these in the last week. Just watch the carb queen on that one. It's not that hard. Take it off. New diaphragm. Maybe the pickup tubes are... Well, let's see what the jetting's like. It's like two and a half turns. So, I took off the holder for the breather tube, and I want to do what I consider a field cleaning. Basically, you take the side off, and I took the jet out as well. Lift the tank on. Now, I don't know what field you work in. I generally don't have air tools when I work in any type of outdoor field, but, you know, maybe you're taking this over to a friend's house or something, and he has a little pancake air compressor or something, I don't know. But most people have at least a screwdriver. I mean, if you don't have one in your car, truck, SUV, whatever you drive, you probably need to uh, put one in there. This is a hard one. The exhaust doesn't make this easy. I'm going to work on this so you don't get bored. Now you come over here. Pop this off. And take this out anyway. I don't care if we ruin it. Uh, so I just looked at it, but the spring was in the wrong side. I didn't really notice that the first time. Well, I didn't really go that deep into it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow compressed air in this hole and this hole. That's going to make a little bit of a mess, so I'm going to put you away while I do that. I'm also going to blow compressed air in a hole with the needle. Then I'm going to put a new, or, yeah, new gasket on there, um, or diaphragm, and we'll see if it works then. Everything's done. Um, like I said, it's a quick and dirty one. I don't suspect this being too bad, but when I looked at the diaphragm before, I just... I couldn't get all the back screw off, so I didn't really look at it entirely. When looking at it, when it came out and seeing the spring on backwards, yeah. There was a problem. If we fix that problem, let's give it a pull. Uh, I want to do one and a half turns out. one and three quarters. Well, that's a sign one and three quarters might not be enough. The air filter also will change and mix a little bit. I'll fine tune it once we get this running. I just don't have it on in case I need to put carb spray down the throat of it.
It definitely seems to be running a little on the richer end. Try this again. That idle screw is backed out almost the entire way. Okay, well, I think we have it. Um, it will need oil changing, that's for sure. Uh, the oil in there was full but dirty. Everything seems to be fine with the carb now, so that's good. There appears to be no leaks. The muffler is a little dirty, yeah, but it's a 1977 or something along the sort, maybe different. Runs good, idles good. I do kind of think the throttle is a little low, and the arm appears to be a little bent, oh no, not the arm, but the linkage, it's a little bent, let me put it back where I think it should be. I bent a little bit, but it's probably not going to result in much, maybe a few hundred RPM if that. The actual carburetor itself has a, a maximum built in there so you're not going to be able to do too much to begin with. I could potentially redo the governor but I don't think it's necessary. It's probably doing 3300. That's fine. You're not going to notice too much of a difference with the massive gearing down a rototiller does. There's no way those tines go anywhere near the RPM so yeah you're just not going to notice too much. Your power loss is even minimal. Okay, um, 
granted you should be testing this out in real dirt I will grant you that one but you know I'm in I have a little bit of tilling to do uh, where I test the other ones and I'll do the same here nothing too elaborate but if there's anything special I'll bring you back but I don't suspect there's too much of anything left to do on this except for just the oil and the filter uh, the plug is good carb is good new belts maybe the tines could be cleaned up a little bit there's a piece kind of broken down there but it doesn't appear to be leaking I do want to check the grease in the transmission or the oil it should be gear oil just to make sure but I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem at the very least I'll top it off it's low but yeah this should be about it so if you have one of these and you need to replace the belts you know, this is how the numbers on there I uh, gave you if you have a Napa go in there and they should have them if not then look up those numbers and just get the sizes I'll look them up and put them on the screen now or I'll do it when I show you the belts actually other than that I think we should be good if you have any questions comments concerns definitely leave them in the section below definitely like and subscribe I'll keep you and keep posting if you keep watching have a good night